This is a personal narrative from my youth that I've held close until this moment. Today I'm finally prepared to open up and share it with all of you. Thank you for being such a special audience on this channel. So, this story is one of those things that still gives me goosebumps whenever I think about it. It happened a few winters ago, when my father decided we needed to visit our uncle in the country. Now mind you, I wasn't too keen on the idea, because I knew it was going to be a long, boring trip full of conversations that I would never understand for the life of me. Anyway, we arrived at my uncle's house, and I could tell right away that something was wrong. The air was tense, you know? As if there was some kind of heavy cloud hanging over the entire place. My father and uncle started talking, or rather arguing, about things and I was kind of distracted, trying to make sense of it all. But then things started getting louder, and voices got louder and all that. My father decided it was time to leave, but he was late. Like really late. My uncle offered us to travel there at night, but my father was adamant that we return home. It was pitch black outside, very cold, and there wasn't a soul in sight. No taxis, no buses, nothing. But my old father, stubborn as he was, insisted that we find a way home. So, my uncle managed to move this semi-broken car, like a rusty old jalopy if you ask me, to take us to the highway. I remember sitting in that car, shivering from the cold, and feeling this uncomfortable feeling creeping up on me. And then suddenly he stopped and told us that this was as far as he had come, leaving us stranded in an unknown place. I remember feeling this feeling of fear wash over me as we stood there on the side of the road, watching the car's taillights disappear into the darkness. It was like we were in some horror movie, you know? Like anything could happen at any moment. It was late, and the highway was pretty deserted. However, after what seemed like forever, this bus finally showed up. It looks like it's seen better days, but beggars can't be choosers, right? So my dad and I, things started to get weird pretty quickly. At first the driver seemed out of sorts, like he was staring at us a little intensely, you know? But we ignored it, thinking maybe he was tired or something. So we took our seats, and off we went. Now, I'm sitting by the window, watching the world around me, when I notice that something isn't right. We are not on the usual path. I nudge my father and point it out. He has this worried look on his face and goes to the driver. Why are we going this way? This is not the way to our city, my father asked in a tense voice. Do you know what the driver said? He said we are heading to another city. Like what? My father is panicking now and told the driver that he asked someone who got off the bus earlier and they said the bus is going to where we want to go. But the driver just laughs, this sarcastic and terrifying laugh. He tells us, that he did not stop to let anyone down, and no one did. He says he stopped sympathizing with us when we waved at him. I mean, who does that? My father is getting angrier by the second, demanding that the driver stop and let us go. Finally, the driver did it, and he was still laughing to himself as if it was all a big joke. Well, after we got off that crazy bus, things got even weirder. My dad was totally upset, but me? I was scared out of my wits. The road was like something out of a horror movie. Dark, foggy, and scary as hell. We found this group of villagers gathered around a fire. They seemed normal enough and were talking as if it were just another night. My father, being the curious type, would ask them about the road ahead. You won't believe what they said. They told us that there is no way to cross this street except on foot. And get this, it's about 20 kilometers long. I mean, what kind of corrupt way is this? But here's the real problem. When I looked into someone's eyes, there was this weird red glow. Then I noticed it in all of them. It was like something out of a nightmare. I told my father we had to move, and fast. So, we started walking, and let me tell you, it felt like we had been walking for days. I was tired and afraid, and the wind was howling like a banshee behind us. Then I hear it. Laughter. A frightening and evil laugh, as if it was coming from all around us. I turn to my father and ask him if he hears it too. His face, illuminated by the glow of his cigarette, looked as if he had seen a ghost. But he just nodded, his eyes darting around as if trying to figure out where it was coming from. 
Suddenly, this thing, this animal, jumps out of the bushes. It's unlike anything you've ever seen before, all teeth and claws and glowing eyes. My father says it's a wolf, and if he hadn't lit that cigarette, he would have surely attacked us. Just when I think we're done, the wolf stops in its tracks, looks back as if being called, and then disappears into the darkness. I don't know what saved us that night. After that ordeal with the wolf, we started hearing footsteps behind us, as if someone was running towards us at full speed. I was about to turn around when my father grabbed my hand so hard that it hurt and said, Don't look back. Now, you can imagine how terrified I felt at that moment. But we continued walking, and soon this microbus stopped next to us. The driver looked at us like he had seen a ghost and asked us where we were coming from and what we were doing on this road. My father explained that we were trying to get home, and what was the driver's reaction? Let's just say it was something else. He began thanking heaven that we were still alive, saying that it was nothing short of a miracle that we came out like this. Turns out, that highway we were on? It's like something out of a horror story. Drug dealers used to hide there, and people would disappear without a trace. Even the police were too afraid to approach it. But here is the important point. The driver told us that we would get a new lease on life because we survived this hellish road. He refused to take any money from us, saying it was a reward for getting out alive. My father tried to ignore it, telling the driver not to scare me with words like that. But deep down, I think we knew we dodged a bullet that night. As that minibus took us down that nightmare highway, all I could think about was how lucky we were to be alive. Enjoying the content? Subscribe now for more. I used to work on a truck, and let me tell you, I was one of those people who preferred quiet roads after dark. It was easier to get around without all the traffic. So there I was, on one of my usual walks, close to midnight, and the road stretched empty before me. The weather was calm at first, nothing out of the ordinary. But then, suddenly, the sky opened up, and it started raining as if on a mission. Lightning cracked across the sky, making the road glow in an eerie light. The thunder was so loud that it felt like it was shaking the truck. Now, I don't usually get spooked easily, but something that night sent a shiver down my spine. Maybe it was the way the lightning illuminated everything, making shadows dance in the rain. Or maybe it was just feeling alone in the storm. Either way, I knew I needed to pause and wait. So, I was sitting in the cab of my truck, listening to the rain falling on the roof and watching the lightning flashes. Time seemed to stretch on forever, and I began to feel like I was the only person left in the world. And here, I saw it a faint light in the distance, flickering like a dying flame. At first I thought it might be another truck coming down the road, but as I got closer, I realized it was something else entirely. A car was standing in the middle of the highway, its headlights dim and broken. It looked like it had been in a bad accident. The front end was crushed and crumpled up like a piece of paper. Now, I'll admit, my first instinct was to keep driving. I mean, who wants to get involved in someone else's mess? especially in the middle of a storm. But then I saw her, a girl standing next to the car in the pouring rain, her hair brushed over her face and her clothes wet. I couldn't leave her there alone, could I? So I parked the truck on the shoulder and got out, yelling at her over the roar of the rain. She didn't respond at first, just stood there as if in a trance. But as I got closer, I heard her mutter something under her breath, something that sent shivers down my spine. I asked her if she was okay, if she needed help, but she kept staring at me with those eyes. And then, suddenly she started screaming, a high-pitched wail that cut through the storm like a knife. I don't mind telling you, it scared the living daylights out of me. I tried to calm her down and tell her what happened, but she continued to scream and scream. Then it stopped as suddenly as it started. She stood there for a moment, silent and still before turning and walking away into the darkness. I began to examine the car, my heart pounding in my chest as if trying to break free. The rain was coming down harder, 
soaking me to the bone as I moved closer. But when I got closer, nothing happened. It wasn't a car at all. It was just a frame, the skeleton of a car with headlights that looked eerily similar to the real deal. I couldn't believe my eyes. I mean, who leaves something like that in the middle of nowhere? Why did it seem so real? Questions swirled in my head like angry bees, but one thought overshadowed all the others. Get out of here. Fast. I turned to leave, my shoes sliding in the mud as I walked back to my truck. But then I heard it, a sound that froze me in my tracks. It was a voice, whispering in the dark, so low I could barely make out the words. Help me, he said over and over, like a broken record stuck on repeat. My blood turned to ice in my veins. I didn't know where the sound was coming from, or who it belonged to, but I knew I had to get out of there. So, without thinking, I started running, my heart pounding in my chest, my breaths coming in ragged gasps. I didn't stop until I was at my truck, the metal door closing behind me with a deafening clang. I fumbled for the keys, my hands shaking so badly I could barely hold them. Then, without another thought, I turned the engine on and headed down the road, leaving the nightmare behind in a cloud of dust and rain. I didn't look back. I didn't wait to hear or see anything else. I drove, further and faster than I had ever driven before, until I couldn't hear the whispering sound anymore, until I couldn't even remember what it sounded like. That night changed me. I believed that I was invincible, that nothing could scare me. But now? Now I know better. Now I know that sometimes, the scariest things are the ones you least expect to happen. May God help everyone who crosses the road, regardless of the road they travel on. One night, I was on my way home from a bustling metropolis after putting in a grueling 14-hour shift at the office. Exhaustion weighed heavily on me, and my eyelids drooped as I navigated the deserted streets. As I drove, the solitary car on the road, I caught sight of something peculiar in the middle of the street. Rubbing my eyes in disbelief, I peered closer, but it vanished before my eyes. A shiver ran down my spine as I passed the spot, glimpsing it again in my rearview mirror. Heart pounding, I raced home, trembling with fear. Upon reaching my doorstep, I struggled to articulate what I had witnessed to my family. The next day, I confided in my parents, who dismissed my experience as fatigue-induced hallucination. Their reassurance brought some relief, and I spent the day recuperating. However, the following evening, as I retraced my route, an eerie sensation gripped me. Approaching the same spot, I braced myself for another encounter, but this time, the presence was absent. With other cars on the road, I felt a semblance of security. On the third day, buoyed by the promise of extra pay, I headed to work, only to have my spirits dampened by the prospect of yet another overtime shift. Wearily, I made my way home after another long day, and once again, I glimpsed the inexplicable figure on the road. It remained motionless, a silent sentinel haunting my journey. Upon arriving home, I scoured the area for answers, learning of a tragic accident involving a vacationing family and their lost child. The revelation shook me to the core. Could it be that the apparition I had seen was the restless spirit of the deceased child, yearning to reunite with her family? As rumors of similar sightings circulated, I shared my discovery with my parents, who mused on the possibility of lingering spirits seeking closure. In a world where skepticism reigns, I am reminded that some truths lie beyond explanation, and that perhaps we are fortunate to catch a glimpse of the unseen.